Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kastler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to talk about QSK. Well, what it means and, and how it's used in ham radio. Uh, this question came from Michael K7AJQ. And he says, hello Dave, I have an X5150 Zygu radio and it has a QSK on the menu. On or off is the choice. What is it for? Any help would be greatly appreciated. Thank you, Mike K7AJQ. Well, let's take a look. I put some charts together and I've taken a bunch of photographs and screen prints of uh, various radios and we'll see what we can find. First of all, let's look at the literal meaning of QSK. This is from taken from a document called ACP 131 and it's on revision F. This is the 2009 revision and uh, is widely available on the internet. The document is essentially a NATO document. Uh, it was put together by the Five Eyes group and is uh, a common uh, set of codes to be used by uh, everybody worldwide. There are Q codes and there are Z codes. The Z codes are used by the Navy. The Q codes are uh, used by hams and by merchant marine and by ships and uh, places like that all over the world. QSK, when posed as a question, in other words, QSK with a question mark, can you hear me between your signals? And if so, can I break in on your transmission? In other words, as you're transmitting, is there a way for uh, the other operator to break in, hence the term break in, on your transmission? Now, QSK sent simply as a statement means I can hear you between my signals, break in on my transmission, I guess, comma, as you please. In ham radio, it generally refers to Morse code communications, or CW. Some digital modes can do this too. Break in means the receiving operator can interrupt the sending operator and get the attention of the sending operator. Okay, break in is a function of the transmitting operator's equipment. The transmitting operator is transmitting, and if he can hear signals between his dits and dots, then someone else can break into that transmission. <clears throat> you know, and, and I, I guess you should talk about under what circumstances you would want to break into somebody else's transmission. You might want to interrupt a long-winded message to say, hey, uh, headquarters, yeah, we're sinking. Uh, could you please do something about that? You know, something like that. Or it could be as simple as somebody breaking in to a long-winded transmission about somebody's radio and saying, sorry, got to go, wife just called for dinner, uh, whatever it may be. It's usually done by sending a string of dits. Okay. Um, so break-in is the ability to receive between the transmitted dits and dots. Okay. Now there are types of break-in, three that are important in ham radio. Uh, there's another form that's important for commercial operators, but hams don't use it. Okay, the no break-in. A transmitting operator sets the mode on his transmitter to transmit. And then the receiver is muted for the entire transmission until the operator changes it back to receive. That's no break-in. And by the way, is the classical way it was done. A semi-break-in is the receiver is muted during transmission of each dit and da and also muted for a set time after each element. And so it might be between words or between thoughts that that person can hear the other station, but not during uh, the transmission. Full break-in means the receiver is unmuted between each, each dit and da. 
each dit and da, you hear the receiver, and so if the other person sending a string of dits, between your dits and da's, between your letters, you'll hear that. Okay, now I, I want to put in a little caveat on full break in. Um, the receiver automatic gain control recovery time uh, plays a part in implementation of full break in, and I'm going to show you some uh, uh, graphs of that. First of all, let's talk about no break in. If not using break in, then there's no break in symbol down here. Okay, and you must, in order to transmit, push the transmit toggle button, which puts the rig in transmit. See, it's in receive right now with the green. You would do that. We're showing it in receive mode. You push that key, and here's what you get. You get the transmit indicator uh, changes color. You get the red transmit indicator down here. And nothing is happening. Your receiver is muted. Nothing is transmitted until the key is pressed down or the paddles are used. And then something is transmitted. During this period of time, you won't get any interruptions. Now, I want to show this on the G90. This is uh, the little HF transceiver from Zygu that uh, is very popular right now. I've got one here for review. So I'd show you, I thought I'd show you how to do this on the Zygu. Um, Mike talks about having an X5150, what's well, made by the same manufacturer as makes the G90, so it's going to operate very similarly. So the mode is CW, and then over here on the front, there's the key key. Okay, normally when the key has not been pressed, you're looking at bandwidth and SWR right here. Okay, now if we press the key once, we see speed. This is the speed for the built-in keyer for use with uh, the paddles. And by turning this knob right here, you can make that go down or up. I would put it up above 13 for individual characters, closer to 18, and then send, by putting a lot of space between characters, you're sending slowly, but fast enough that the character can be received easily. If you press that again, you're going to get this M, which is manual, meaning a straight key, L and R. Now this means do you have the dash on the left side or the right side of the paddle and this is the dits or something like that. So you can flip the paddle if it isn't wired uh, the same as what this thing is used to. Okay, let's push it one more time and we get mode. Now mode in terms of um, CW, uh, this is for the keyer. There's a mode A and a mode B. And this has to do with the way the iambic uh, keying is implemented. There's a mode A and a mode B. Most people use mode B. That's what they're used to. Okay, and then the next one you get to QSK. Okay, on or off. If you turn it off, the only way to get the key to cause the rig to transmit is to hold down the push to talk button on the microphone because there is no separate transmit button on here. Okay, so if the QSK, however, is on, then if you press one more time, you have the QSK time, and this is the delay from the time of your last key up until the receiver opens up again. You can set this all the way down to zero if you want full QSK. If you find that this is not long enough, that your code speed is still pretty slow, you can turn this up quite a bit, okay? And so you can make the QSK time what you are interested in. Now, let's look at this on the ICOM 7300. First, if you are in break-in, break-in on the 7300 is semi-break-in. Okay, if while this is up, if this screen is up, if you press and hold the Vox slash break-in button, you can change the delay time for semi-break-in. 
Uh, this is 7.5 units of D, whatever D is, delay. It doesn't have it in um, milliseconds like the uh, G90 does. Okay, so if you're in standard break-in, this is what it looks like. Note that here's the letter S, dit, 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 and the receiver is muted during the sending of that letter. Now you could start another letter over here and it would remain muted, but if you leave it like this, let's see, 300 milliseconds per division, okay, that's about 600, 600 milliseconds there, you see the receiver come on. Now I want you to note here that the receiver comes on kind of gradually. This is what I'm talking about receiver recovery. The receiver actually is fully recovered somewhere over here. Okay, so this is semi-break-in, or just break-in on the 7300, and the receiver is muted uh, during these. My first introduction to full break-in was right after I got out of college back in the 70s. Um, and I had this uh, uh, Heathkit HW16 radio, which was the cat's meow for novices back then. It was a Heathkit radio. Uh, prices were a little lower back then, too. Um, anyway, this had full break-in, so the way you transmitted was to press the key down, and when you let the key come up, you immediately heard what was on the band. It was really hard for me to get used to that. I did, but um, it took a while to get used to. This is what full break-in looks like on the 7300. Note that it says F break-in for full break-in. The receiver unmutes between each code element. So you've got your code element and then some receiver noise a code element, some receiver noise, a code element, some receiver noise, a longer code element, and then the receiver noise uh, comes back in. Many people find this unnerving. Uh, once they get used to it, it's fine, but it starts out being kind of unnerving. Um, so what do I recommend? I would recommend starting with semi-break-in so that you can form your letters and words without interruption. Once you're confident of your CW, you can move to full break-in. Um, and then uh, you can be having a real conversation with somebody because in a real conversation, they can interrupt you. Now, some digital modes have this capability too. Uh, with packet, it's full duplex. So if you're sending a transmission this way, you can send a transmission this way at the same time. Not literally the same time, but practically. Uh, Amtor and Pactor had the ability to switch the direction of send-receive. The person on the receiving end could push a button causing the direction of the link to reverse so they could send an interrupt uh, or something like that. Um, and, of course, CW, if you do it with break-in, uh, has that capability. So, some have it, some don't. Uh, do I consider it an important characteristic of CW? Well, I would recommend semi-break-in. So, if you pause for a moment, the other person can send an interrogatory or say, sorry, gotta go, or something like that. Uh, full break-in allows someone to break in, and when you're first learning CW, that can be really unnerving. So that's why I'm recommending starting with uh, semi-break-in. So there you have it, a nice little explanation of what uh, QSK means. Mike, I hope that is, answers your question. And um, please, everybody, subscribe. Um, it doesn't uh, hurt your channel or anything like that to uh, subscribe. It is rather your vote of confidence in this channel is something that YouTube should, rec uh, should recommend to other people. Uh, if you want notifications, you can click on the bell. 
And uh, now I've noticed that YouTube isn't sending email notifications quite like it was before. So uh, <laughs> they claim that you'll still be notified about it. What you need to do is every so often go on YouTube and take, check your subscriptions for new videos. And uh, also, if you would please check out dcastler.com slash support for different ways that you can help fund this channel. And until we next meet, 73.